Electrostatic powder coating efficiency is based on applying electrostatic charge to particles of dry powder. In most cases, negative charging electrode polarity is used in corona charging systems. The strength of the high voltage electric field is highest at the tip of the charging electrode and, at a certain level, creates a corona discharge there. Corona discharge is a type of cold plasma that results in large number of electrons produced in the corona area and injected into the space between the gun and part. These electrons attach themselves to air molecules, thereby creating negatively charged ions. If the electric field outside corona discharge is sufficiently strong, the ions in turn attach themselves to powder as we start spraying powder. As a result, a cloud of charged particles and free unattached ions is created between the gun and part. The cumulative charge of powder particles and free ions comprising the cloud is called space charge. The space charge creates its own electric field, which interacts with the field of the high voltage electrode and assists in the powder particles deposition onto the grounded surface. Powder delivery is accomplished by adding virgin powder to the paint system, utilizing a bulk pumping system. This is accomplished with the use of Venturi pumps or dense phase pumps to transfer the powder coating from the container to the powder coating booth. Some coaters use drum feeding systems like the one pictured on the left, and some coaters that use large volumes of powder will use vibratory tilt tables like the one pictured on the right. Some coders will also manually add the virgin powder into the hopper or reclaim unit. Once the virgin powder coating is introduced into the paint system, it is pumped from the feed hopper to the powder coating guns using Venturi pumps or dense phase pumps. Reclaim powder, or sometimes referred to as recycled powder, is then pumped from the cartridge reclaim collector unit or cyclone collector unit back to the gun feed hopper using Venturi pumps or dense phase pumps. Automatic powder coating guns should have a gun to part distance of 10 to 12 inches from the part being coated. Gun to gun spacing should be equal from top to bottom to ensure that you have powder crossover from one gun to the next. Gun oscillating or reciprocating speeds should be set in a manner so that parts are properly coated to meet required mill thickness. If gun movement is too slow, the part may be too heavy. If the gun movement speed is too fast, the part may be light. Understanding your gun control units is a very important part of powder coating application and how it relates to the finished product's appearance. Most control units have preset settings built in for painting first-time raw parts, parts with recessed areas, or recoat settings. Control units can also be programmed with custom settings for specific parts. Gun settings will allow you the flexibility to control the following. KV, 1 kilovolt equals 1,000 volts, is the unit of measure indicating how much electrical charge the gun can produce. The current, in microamps, is the unit of measure indicating how much charge is moving from the gun's electrode to the air and powder exiting the gun and also the substrate. The gun should be set at the maximum KV value available as long as it does not produce an undesirable finish. This is because a high KV setting generates the highest potential to charge powder than a lower setting, thus yielding better transfer efficiency. KV should be lowered only when it becomes necessary to reduce back ionization or other undesirable effects that cannot be controlled otherwise. It may also be necessary to lower KV when recoating a part in order to reduce the chances of back ionization caused from charging the cured finish beneath. Microamp settings or current feedback is a better indication than voltage of what the electrostatic charge is doing. This is because current tells you how much of the charge is moving or working instead of the charger's potential. Current can sometimes be limited with electrostatic powder coating systems depending on the type of gun control unit. Limiting current is a very good way to control the electrostatic charge produced by the gun. It is also the optimal way to achieve high transfer efficiency while working closely to the substrate in an effort to overcome the Faraday cage effect. For first pass coating of complex parts, KV should be set to maximum with the current limited to approximately 20 to 30 microamps. It should be noted that the 100 KV setting is also a limiting setting built into the power supply. 
you will likely not have 100 kV while spraying apart. When spraying apart, the potential voltage is being realized due to the load on the power supply and will be lower than the actual setting. As the gun depart discharge gets smaller, the current load will increase. As the current load reaches the limit set point, the kV will fall rapidly. This abrupt fall of the kV is what helps prevent back ionization when working close to the substrate. Faraday cage effect is noticed when we try and powder coat parts with recessed areas, inside corners, channels, and protrusions on the part surface. Faraday cage is the areas of the part where external electric fields do not penetrate the recessed areas of the part. Electric field lines always go to the closest grounded point and therefore concentrate on the edge of a recess rather than penetrating farther inside. Powder coating recessed areas can be complicated and in certain situations may even be impossible to coat. Back ionization is a common issue in powder coating. Back ionization occurs when too much charge accumulates on the powder coating layer covering the part surface. Back ionization is currently caused by an excessive free ion current from the gun's charging electrode. When free ions arrive to the powder coated part surface, they add their charge to that accumulated on the powder coating layer. At some point, the amount of charge on the powder coating layer becomes so high that microsparks develop throughout the coating. These sparks create craters and starring on the surface of the powder coated part. The role of the automatic powder coating gun is to coat as much of the part as possible while meeting paint thickness requirements. Automatic guns are designed to coat large surface areas in an efficient manner. It is important to understand that touch-up will be required on complex parts. Bent and recessed areas of parts will require manual reinforcement.